It's the stuff of romantic legend, artists going to extremes in pursuit of their passion, but it takes a steely resolve to commit to a year in an inhospitable place not meant for humans, Antarctica. Packed with paints and cameras, Stephen Eastor has headed south numerous times, captivated by its harsh wilderness. A lot has been said by scientists and explorers about the significance of Antarctica, artists not so much. 12 years ago Stephen Eastor got a peek at the continent when he tagged along on a resupply voyage. So basically it was a big voyage and a, and a little look at a big continent and uh, I hassled them again politely to take me down to you know, stay longer so I could get to know the continent rather than the Southern Ocean. That was the start of a love affair with the ice. In total I've been nine times to Antarctica, three times with the Australian Antarctic Division and six other times on various sort of tour boats, also operating as an artist. He's the first and so far only arts fellow to winter with the Australian Antarctic Division. Lucky me, not many artists uh, get to do a, you know, such a long residency in such an odd place. So, uh, you know, I love the Australian Antarctic Division. That year he produced more than 200 paintings. As part of this year's celebration of 100 years of Australian Antarctic exploration, an exhibition of some of his works has just opened at Hobart's Carnegie Gallery. Called an awfully beautiful place, Eastor says he's drawn to nasty, rough and brutal landscapes. How nasty, rough and brutal was Antarctica? Uh, well, it has the potential to kill you if you make a few mistakes, uh, although that rarely happens these days. But the weather's quite uh, tricky, let's call it that, yeah. Some of that tricky weather and how stationers adapt forms the basis of a series of works. Blizzard lines, you know, the strange uh, bits of rope tied between one building and another building that you know, are quite helpful when you need to walk uh, from A to B. Uh, that spawned into another series of work about knots. And, uh, th that was amusing for me because the, you were always looking at the knots, as in the, uh, the wind factor, and there was always knots for tying things down. Uh, the work of Antarctic science is a regular feature in Australian media. Eastor brings a different perspective to life on the continent. Blizzards come and go and uh, I try to get into some kind of uh, normal routine in a uh, very not normal place. In his impressions, Eastor details many of the things that aren't there. No rain, family, money, shops, police, neon signs, and the list goes on. Most people would think you must be bonkers in the first place to mm. want to do that. And, and they would be correct, yeah, yeah. I'm probably a bit bonkers, yeah. I tell a lie. It's worthwhile. That's the price you pay for, for, for uh, going to an extremely remote region that's incredibly stunning. Using acrylic paint on textured fabrics, Eastor's palette is, given the subject, naturally monochrome, interspersed with bolts of red. Black, white and red are the punchy colours. I don't barrack for St Kilda or anybody like that, but uh, black, white and red are your primary colours. Thread adds texture. The scale is really quite difficult to capture and, and, and as you see around this exhibition I, I have scaled up. I've got some dirty big pictures here that are two metres by four metres. That was my pathetic uh, method of uh, trying to sort of uh, uh, translate the bigness into a painting. Eastor has spent much of the past 25 years on the road visiting more than 80 countries. There's other places that I've mentioned that I said that, you know, were equally grandiose. But uh, Antarctica is my favourite. Mm. 